A group calling itself the Collective Voices Against Health Xenophobia says it strongly condemns what it calls Operation Tutula's attack on patients at the Jeppe Clinic. Foreign nationals were allegedly turned away from the clinic told to seek health care in their countries of origin. The Collective Voices say this is not only a danger to individuals but the public health care system as a whole. Let's speak now to Isaiah Mombilo uh, from Congolese Civil Society of South Africa, Dr. Maliz Richter of Health Justice Initiative. We're also joined by Vosa Sibanda, who is the chairperson of the African Diaspora Global Network. And in studio, we have Professor Seth Scooper, president of Pan African Psychology Union. Thank you so much to you all for your time virtually and in studio. I'll begin with you. Um, Dr. Maliz, let's talk about this statement. I mean, a statement saying that this is not an, only a danger to individuals, but the system as a whole. Put us in, in the picture there what you mean, especially in the context of what we saw unfolding at JP Clinic. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, I think what we have seen from, from newspaper reports and comrades on the ground is that a group of uh, of supporters of Operation Dudula prevented what we think are, are foreign migrants from accessing services at, at JP Clinic um, and actually violently assaulting some, some of the patients. And this is not the first time that this has happened in South Africa. We believe it's part of a, a, a greater movement towards uh, preventing people from access health care. Um, and we believe that health xenophobia in that way is ultimately bad for, for private, for individual health, but also for, for public health as a whole, because it chases people away from, from the see seeking care that they need, um, which means that they will ultimately become sicker. Isaiah, um, you know, for you, how do you react to, to that particular incident and the others that we've seen in the public domain? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I believe that uh, people don't understand really uh, how uh, a xenophobia system can move to a job or uh, reality to the health system. And we believe that this is shows that uh, there's no feature of uh, the generation of African people because when you touch the health system and you make the health system to be collapsed, or the respect of the principle of health system uh, to don't be uh, uh, applied properly, it means you're already killing an entire generation without you uh, picking up the danger of that. This is the way we're looking at this uh, xenophobia attack in the health system. Prof. Cooper, um, in, in studio, let's, let's talk about this because this is not an isolated incident. We've seen quite a few. Um, you know, and, and, and I wonder, one then asks the question, why are we seeing these scenes emerging more and more? Is it because people are upset and are, are feeling some kind of helplessness or is there more here? I think uh, people are upset. There's no doubt that our systems have fallen apart. We don't have the right systems to monitor the movement of people and we have a problem in terms of uh, border controls and so on. However, in the health space and in the education space, which is probably going to be another area where these uh, sort of uh, groups that are fringe will end up being mainstream groups. And we, you see that where, uh, like in Europe, against the migrants, you know, and right wing, ultra right wing Trumpism in Sweden you have uh, a right wing president uh, and so on all of that starts happening because of these kinds of uh, movements that begin basically with saying we're going to protect our people and so on but when you enter a place where people need health care they are hospitalized they are critical then it says that you don't have any compassion. Your compassion is lost, your sense of fellow suffering and humanity is lost, and it's intolerable. But we've gotten there because our systems basically have crumbled, uh, and leaders in the health space, uh, ministers, uh, MECs, have gone out on tirades against persons. Now, What's frightening is that we've had people who, have, who otherwise would be ones to be 
on the side of the helpless and hopeless. But now joining these kinds of groups to say they are right because they are saving our country. Saving our country from what? The country is crumbling. You do nothing about protesting poor health care, but you go and attack or prevent people who are seriously in need. That means there's something else going on. In a year or two, you're going to find these groups morphing into political entities and entering the political space. They're being, some of these groups are funded by well-heeled uh, persons in this country. Otherwise, they would not be as organized as they are. So all of those, the government knows, the police know, it's a failure of the health, this, uh, the criminal justice system and the policing. First of all, in the health system, surely if you admitted for on whatever basis and there is a constitutional provision that no health care should be denied anybody in this country. Unlike in Europe, when you enter Europe, you enter North America, in your passport as you enter they say no social, uh, social benefits, including health because you won't be allowed those. But in our country, we don't have that. Maybe if the system changes, hopefully not, but we need better monitoring and we don't have that. But our politicians are also lily livid. They play to the gallery and they play to utter populism, which tomorrow is going to grow into a movement that we will rue the day we allow these groups to perpetuate themselves. I'm going to come back to you um, about the, the channeling then of this anger that you're talking about and where should it be headed towards. But I'd like to bring in Dr. Zwanda, who I understand has joined us now. Dr. Zwanda, let's talk about, you know, what Dr. Cooper, uh, Professor Cooper, in fact, is talking about here in studio. We start with this point, the protection of our people, as some are claiming we are doing, protecting our people and versus xenophobia. Where do we draw the line there? Thank you very much and uh, good evening. Look, I think um, the biggest problem that we need to start looking at is the fact that, you know, every action that we have seen taking place, like people being kicked out of hospitals, and we've also seen children being, you know, removed from schools, are unlawful actions. And, you know, there is law that is very clear that shows who is responsible for ensuring that, for example, you know, if somebody is not entitled to a particular service, if it's a hospital, the hospital has got a CEO, there is an act that relates, you know, to how people should be treated at the hospitals. Now, what we see happening, you know, with Jujula doing what it is doing, it is what we call self-help, taking the law into their own hands. And that is against the law because self-help or taking the law into one's own hands is something that is a criminal offense. Now, if we are going to continue to even entertain the thought of saying that people are tired and people are not receiving, you know, or they're, 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 they're fed up, you know, with um, the poor control of people, and as a result, they should be allowed to have self-help, we're going to have a situation where, you know, people are going to deal, you know, with criminals or anything that is wrong in their own way, and therefore, the SAPS does not have, you know, a, a job anymore. Our courts do not have a job anymore. So I think what we need to be looking at now is to condemn these actions, you know, with the strongest sense of condemnation that we can, you know, uh, push into it. Because, you know, once a person, you know, impairs somebody from doing something that they are entitled to do and they make themselves a law, that means that we no longer have, you know, a system that needs to be followed. If somebody is breaking the law, a person, any other person can report that there is a person that is breaking the law. Now, even the clinics which allow these people to enter their premises to disturb, you know, the privacy of people that are sick, it's very unfortunate. I think that's what maybe the professor is also referring to that. We have had the MEC of Health in Limpopo doing the same thing. It's very unfortunate that we've got, you know, politicians who think they are above the law and they can go about, you know, saying statements that infringe, for example, the National Action Plan and, you know, hate, you know, uh, speech. Now, those and, 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 and unfair discrimination, all of those are crimes in South Africa which should be dealt with in terms of the law. And what we need to see happening now is to see some of these people prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And that is the only time when people are going to be discouraged 
from taking the law into their own hands. It's very unfortunate that this started a long time ago, you know, when the, we had the 2008, you know, snowfall, big attacks, 2015, 2016, 2019. And unfortunately, we have not had a situation where people were fully prosecuted to the extent that, you know, such cases were followed and people were finally given hefty, you know, sentences or prison sentences so that other people yeah. can see that criminal offences. And, 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 and Mali, Dr. Maliz, I'd like to come back to you uh, because this, as you were saying earlier on, has a huge impact on the system and it has ripple effects. We're in the middle of a pandemic right now. We still are being told that more variants, more mutations of the COVID-19 um, you know, uh, uh, you know, variants, in fact now Omicron, mutating once again. What then becomes the dangers? when it comes mm. to the scenes that we are seeing on the healthcare system and people then wanting to access your facilities. Yeah. Thank you. I, I want to be very clear that what some of my colleagues have been discussing um, just now, the, the crumbling healthcare system, um, there's no evidence that the healthcare system is crumbling because of providing healthcare access to, to migrants. Um, it's very clear that the health care system is under a huge strain because of mismanagement, uh, political inaccountability, um, corruption and state capture. And we believe that migrants are being made a scapegoat for, for these symptoms. And where people are, are turned away from health care services or chased away, um, perhaps even violently so, uh, when we need everyone to go to access health care, uh, for vaccinations, for, for COVID, as you correctly pointed out, uh, in order for to, to keep all of us safe, for TB, for measles. Um, we need people to, to come to healthcare services, being confident um, that they're protecting their health and also public health as a whole. So we ultimately, in chasing people away from, from healthcare services, you are endangering everyone's lives. You agree, Isaiah? I perfectly agree because you, you, if you look, you see uh, when we have been COVID, uh, in a in COVID period here, I think all all people, all health system was respecting the principle of health system because we could see uh, we are in danger as a global uh, system. So I can't believe in the same time where we are not over the, the COVID yet under prison and uh, people coming to push away people who are coming to the clinic to be assisted by the, the health system. It shows that uh, we are really in danger in a way where we making the global system to collapse in the health system. If for example, there's another pandemic come different than COVID. What's going to happen? Is uh, the Dula movement going to raise the voice and say, we don't want foreigner to go to the hospital? And that's going to cause infection in the people because people live with people in a community. So you cannot make people to don't come to get health system uh, assistance because of what you think because the humanity system cannot make this the health system to be collapsed or to to break the principle of health system this is the danger we're putting ourselves and the danger we're putting of we're putting our continent as an african and we're putting our next generation as i say earlier and this is also lack of information as i say in the the news it means we should try our best to make sure we can touch whatever, but we cannot touch for the last, last thing we can touch. We cannot touch the last, the, this, the, this health system, which is we depend on as a global system. So global system is have to care about no one can touch uh, the health system because mm -hmm. we're going to be affected for that in the next generation as well. Prof, um, earlier on, you, you, you were talking about a myriad of issues um, and, and, and even the monitoring that you also say that, you know, we are failing to do as a country. And of course, that put on the doorstep of those who are governing the country right now. Let's talk about the, the channeling of the anger, because as you say, communities are angry. There's a lot at play here. But where do they then need to channel this anger that has been building up over time to? Uh people have the right to protest. 
that right to protest is enshrined in our constitution within uh, certain uh, rules. You can protest about certain things. The crumbling of our entire system, not merely the health system, the socio-economic, the uh, law and order system in our country has given rise to a free-floating anger that most citizens have. And most citizens living on the periphery, and they're the majority, tend to uh, fester with this rage against the system. So here come these groups, and we've seen them over time. And over time, they morph into political groups. They are ultra-nationalistic, they take up a cause, and they raise issues around that. But that is merely their point of departure. They're choosing who they see as soft targets. And migrants anywhere in the world are soft targets. People who are undocumented are even worse. And we see that all over the world where that becomes an issue. In this country, there's so many issues. Note that it's particularly younger people, the majority in our country. Our median age is somewhere around 27, 28 in this country. Most of them are out of the democratic system. They're not registered to vote. They sit there watching things happen in their name. They're not active participants. And when groups like this emerge, something in their rhetoric appeals to uh, the youth. Many of them are out of school, out of work. Mid-teens to mid-twenties, some 75% are in that category. Hmm. And it's a boiling kettle that's going to explode at any opportunity you find. Today, uh, in the last year and a half, since July uh, 2020, it's been groups like Dudula emerging, these self-help uh, vigilante groups. You've seen them in Durban. You've seen them in Peter Maritzburg. You've seen them in Soweto. Law and order has done nothing about them. We get noises that, yes, we've identified so many people, nobody has been brought to trial, and the politicians allow this to fester because probably they're incapable of doing anything and they don't know how. And it's time that citizens mobilize themselves for their own rights, whether it is better health care, but don't take it out on the defenseless people. All right. Um, you know, one of the things uh, that uh, happens when uh, we are, uh, you know, during primetime television, there's live coverage happening all the time. Right now, we are monitoring developments, as we remind you, the viewers um, that are happening in the Free State. The ANC is, of course, expecting President Cyril Ramaphosa to address um, the conference there. And uh, we saw Olisi Dugwana, now the chairperson of the ANC in the Free State, will take you there as soon as the president speaks we do understand right now that david makura is speaking addressing that gathering but let's try to then continue with this discussion quickly as we then try to wrap up uh, prof before i go back to 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 other uh, panelists just to get a closing remark very quickly where are those who are in charge missing the point then to be able to address what you're talking about when these happened like dr sibanda has pointed out in 2008 we saw alex uh burn the police were nowhere. It was the JMPD that did something. The government under Mbeki w was totally caught off guard. They started raising uh, issues about how uh, the struggle, etc., etc. People are not interested in that. They want action. And they want to see corruption disappear. In all these spheres, you have corruption. We know that within the healthcare system, especially under COVID, there's been corruption. This, uh, many of our facilities have gone worse than they were. Uh, COVID hasn't helped and the corruption hasn't helped. The politicians are self-serving. So what do you expect from youth leadership? They also want to be self-serving. You've seen last year with the uh, local government elections, the most pol uh, political parties being formed because they see money in politics. So everyone wants to get in there, whereas we need a different way to think about it. So, so yes, mobilize around your issues, but don't take it off on the worst amongst us. Our own claim to being human 
is underpinned by how we treat the worst off amongst us. Mm. Um, and those, of course, are words uh, to ponder there. Dr. Malise, for you, what would be your final thoughts then as uh, we are rounding up our conversation there before we are beaten by the live coverage? We've been very disappointed that neither the Gauteng Department of Health nor the Minister of Health um, have said anything about what's happened this, this last week. And we feel that an equivocal condemnation of uh, of these departments are necessary of of operation to do that and that criminal action need to be taken against uh the criminal thugs um that prevented people from from accessing health care and that the doula should be interdicted um from preventing people uh accessing health care in future and for you isaiah in 10, 10 seconds uh thank you very much we just disappointed because we can see uh, the same system of uh, colonization coming back in the hand of uh, black people and uh, to impose uh, uh, the same uh, colonization system to black people in the health system. So we are not really uh, happy about what's going on. We should look at uh, where we can target and uh, look for the proper problem because uh, Foreigners in South Africa are not the scapegoats. They are people who come and their percentage is cannot affect anything about the budget of the health system. So uh, people can try to get more information and good statistics about what they must uh, target, not the foreigners. Thank you very much. Dr. Spanda, you have about five to six seconds. Okay, thank you very much. I think what we are looking at is number one, Section 27 of the Constitution says everyone has a right to health care. Section 29 talks about the right to education and for everyone. And I think the bucks lies with the government. The government is not doing its job in protecting everyone in the country. The government is being selective. And it's very unfortunate that this is on the hands of government. Do as itself said, they do not exercise self-help. They follow the law. This is not the case. They are actually violating the law. We need government to act against this staggering and criminal activities. And yesterday. All right, let me thank you all for your time this evening. Um, as, of course, we'll then take you to the the free state there. But that was uh, Dr. Maliz Richter of Health Justice Initiative, uh, Isaiah Mumbilo um, from Congolese Civil Society of South Africa, and Vusis, Dr. Vusisibanda Cheperson of the African Diaspora. In studio with us was the is the professor, uh, professor, in fact, Professor Seth Cooper, president of Pan-African Psychology Union. This is an important conversation and uh, thank you so much to you all for your time.